Guys, I'm back with uh, example four on evaluating the derivative of the log function. So in this case, we are kind of stepping it up. Guys, looking at this function, what we have to do is we have to find the derivative of this function. Obviously, it is in terms of t, so it would be finding the derivative of y or this function with respect to t. It would be more like finding uh, what we're trying to find here is more like dy over dt, not dx anymore because the function is in terms of t. So guys, it depends on what the function is in terms of. Okay, if it was, uh, we are mostly used to seeing functions in terms of x, so we find dy over dx or derivative with respect to x, but in this case, the function is in terms of t, so one has to find the derivative with respect to t or dt in this case. So guys, just looking at this function, first of all, we should ask ourselves, can I use any of the log properties to simplify this or to break it down into different pieces? Because that makes life easier, which we have already seen in my other examples, okay? Now looking at this, it does not, it, it seems like we cannot use any of the log properties. That's not gonna help us here because what do we have? We have log of the product, uh, we have the log of the quotient and log of the power. Guys, this is not the product, this is the sum of two, this is not a quotient, this is not a power. So we cannot use any of those log properties. If one cannot use the log properties, then one has to directly go into this whole idea of evaluating the derivative of the logs using the general formula for finding the derivative of ln of x or to log to any base b or using the combination of chain rule and the power rule. So guys, let me quickly remind you that when we have the general form, the d over dx of the log x to the base b, because here we don't have the base e, we have uh, basis 3 which is different than e, so one has to use a slightly different form, which is uh, again 1 over x, it is still the inverse function, but you have to uh, do one extra piece or you have to multiply by the denominator, you have to multiply the denominator by the ln of b, which is ln of the base, right? So let us keep this in mind and use that formula to write the derivative of this. So writing the derivative dy over dt, it would be, sorry, t, because we are all used to doing with x, so I keep writing x, so, but it's t in this case. So first of all, it's gonna be still the one over x, means the inverse, so it's gonna be one over t plus one over t. Guys, it does not matter how complex this function inside the parentheses is. It can be just t, x, or it can be as complicated as one t plus a combination of two, three, four functions, does not matter. All you still have to do is one over that. It's still the inverse, right? And then you got to multiply, well, you got to multiply downstairs by ln of three. Let us not forget this. That is based on this general form, right? But we cannot still stop right here because this is not just an x or a t. It is more than an x. Whenever this inside uh, function, inside the parentheses is something more than an x or a t in this case, it means it's a composition, it's a composite function. And whenever we have a combination of functions, we already know that we have to use the chain rule, which means you have to multiply by the derivative of the inner. So in this case, you just have to multiply d over dt of this t plus one over t. We, this is a very important step here, but this is nothing really special. It is just for doing the chain rule, which we have been doing now for some time, right? So based on this, let us go ahead and simplify because there is still room for simplification. So that is this. You can leave it like that, or you can, you know what, I'm gonna write ln of three in the front and then t plus one over t, does not matter, you can write like this, that's okay. Guys, this, we have to uh, we have to actually evaluate the derivative of these two. So we can break it into two pieces, it's the derivative of this function plus this, derivative of t with respect to dt is just one, and then derivative of one over t. So guys, let us do that on the side. So one over t is same as t to the power negative one, and using the formula for x to the power n, the power rule, it's gonna be negative one t to the power neg n minus one, so that will be negative two, so it is negative one over t squared, right? Because we don't like the negative exponents, so the derivative here is just negative one over t squared. I think that would be it. Let us make sure we didn't make any mistakes. Derivative of t with respect to dt is one, and to find the derivative of this, this t to the power negative one, we bring the negative one up here, using the power rule, we get this. I think that's it. So guys, let us, uh, we can write it in a slightly different form. I mean, this is totally fine if you want to leave it like that as a final answer, or you can, because it is multiplied to the numerator. So you can also think of this as one minus one over t squared. You can put it in parentheses, and this whole thing is divided by uh, whatever is in the denominator. I'm just rewriting it. I'm not really changing anything times t plus one over t squared. I cannot cross out anything. Sorry, it's not t squared, it's just one over one plus t. We cannot cross out or simplify any further. So guys, we're gonna just leave the final answer like this.
So guys, this was slightly different than any of the previous examples uh, because it had a different base. It has just base three. So we had to divide by the ln of three. Uh, so we just kept writing it and it, it is part of the final answer. And then we just have to use the chain rule on the inner piece. Okay, guys, this is example four. I will see you next time with another example. Till then, take care.